was when I ruled the world. So I think what's like so different in the last kind of 20 years has been the democratization of technology. So it used to be that the only people that could really afford technology were people that had a lot of money. And now what we've kind of seen, especially with just like computing and the advancement of computers down to like cheap, smart cell phones, is that they end up like everywhere in the world. So I had a friend who was in Mongolia and he'd hurt his ankle doing some mountain climbing. And he hobbles down and he finally gets this um, guy who's on one of these giant camels with all this stuff piled up and he waves him down because he's trying to get to a radio and he doesn't really speak the language so they're talking back and forth and then as he's speaking to the guy he hears this and the guy whips out a cell phone and I think at that moment he sort of like realized like wow the cell phones have just penetrated everything and I think what's going to change with technology is like how cheap they've become and how prevalent they are so now the future looks really interesting because pretty much anyone with a cell phone is going to end up with a whole amazing set of technologies that allow them to learn quickly, that allow them to provide health care to people, that allow them to solve problems with energy, with food, with clean water. So I guess the democratization of technology and maybe also what I would call the virtualization, which is that things that used to be hardware, things that used to have to be physical things, now can actually like be delivered to your cell phone. So that's an interesting one you bring up. So there was one of the projects that came out of just this past summer at Singularity University was uh, these students that had basically come up with a way using a uh, computer chip of pricking you and knowing almost instantly with a small portable device whether or not you have malaria. I've seen a lot of that debate, and it's an interesting debate, but I still think that just because technology can be so cheap and spread so quickly that you'll see even things like malaria um, impacted and affected, and we've seen that already. It didn't happen as much 100 years ago with things like polio, um, but today, the advent of like small technologies to do extraordinary testing really quickly means that you'll be able, probably very likely within just 10 or 20 years, to be able to prick yourself and know whether you'll have 100 different kinds of cancers. And as a result, you know, get treatment for that much earlier that will probably save your life. So. Half the students that come to the school have already won the competition in their country. There's one in Italy, uh, as an example, to positively impact uh, between a million and five million people. So they're already the kind of people that think that way and that want to impact the world. Because it's a very different kind of concept to impact a million. A million falls into the category of what I call, uh, in fact, the uh, founder of Ashoka uh, had communicated it this way. There's sort of direct service where you help people very directly, like a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many ratio. And then there are entrepreneurs, and entrepreneurs can often like change patterns of the way we do things. So like an entrepreneur came up with the idea of FedEx that would like compete against the National Postal Service, right? And so you change the pattern. But then even bigger than that is this idea of people that change um, the way we think about things. The Ashoka founder called those frame changers. I mean really a concept um, characterized by Clayton Christensen where he identified that some technologies were revolutionary meaning that they were kind of unexpected like the car the invention of the car was unexpected you know you've been doing everything by horses and then suddenly somebody invents the car. But the car ended up being something that only the wealthiest people in the world could afford. The disruption didn't happen until you know, 15, 20 years later when um, Henry Ford figured out a way to basically produce cars that were far cheaper. And then anybody could buy it. And suddenly then you disrupted sort of horses. That was a disruptive technology. What we're seeing today is that technologies end up being either like revolutionary or disruptive. And the disruptive ones are the ones that are responsible for like all of the great impact that happens. And being able to differentiate those early 
is really critical in terms of like what investments you make, how you want to spend your own life, because um, you can easily spend it on revolutionary things that will never be disrupted. Uh, if you can identify the difference between the two, you can have enormous impact, especially with exponential technologies. You can impact a billion people today. And there are many people, one of the cool things we do at Singularity University, we actually bring some of those people, like the inventor of the cell phone, in so they can speak about it. Because even these inventors don't even always understand and know like the impact that their inventions will have. So.